Here, we will introduce features of two types of air compressors, one from company T and the other from company S. For each type, characteristics can be seen in the following. Cylinder head and low pressure valve installation method, intercooler and aftercooler structures and their arrangement relative to the cylinder block, cooling water flow, and lubrication method for the inside of the cylinder. First, let's look at Company T's air compressor. We will see its parts as we follow its disassembly process. Detach the pipes after draining the cooling water. Remove the cylinder head. Pull the outer ring out because it may be stuck to the cylinder head. Remove the low pressure valves. Remove the crankcase cover. Then dismount the crank pin bolt. Dismount the bearing. Pull out the piston. Dismount the drain separator. Remove the high pressure suction valve. Remove the first stage cooler. Remove the high-pressure discharge valve. Remove the second stage cooler. Here, we list precautions to be taken during assembly. Fasten the crank bolt with the prescribed torque. Replace packings with new ones when overhauling. There are similar packings, so make sure to mount them in their correct positions. Before beginning to assemble low pressure and high pressure valves, Confirm that the knock pin is inserted in the pinhole provided in the inside of the valve guard. Also, confirm the condition of the low pressure valve's plate valve and check that it has elasticity. High pressure valve's plates should be confirmed too. Now, we will explain the air compression mechanism by stopping the piston motion as needed. When the piston is in downstroke, the outside air is drawn into the upper part of the cylinder via a suction filter and through the suction valve provided at the center of the low pressure valve. The air is compressed as the piston goes up, passing through the discharge valve in the periphery of the low pressure valve. After the air is discharged outside of the cylinder and then cooled by the first stage cooler, drainage is discharged by the drain separator. 
This process allows the air to be drawn into the bottom part of the cylinder from the suction side of the high pressure valve. The air thus sucked in is again compressed by the piston's descent and is delivered to the discharge side of the high pressure valve. It is then cooled by the second stage cooler, goes via a check valve, and is pressure fed to the air reservoir. Repetition of this process allows two stage air compression to take place continuously. Cooling water is fed to cool the air, the temperature of which has risen due to compression. Cooling water, which is supplied by the cooling water pump connected to the compressor shaft or by the auxiliary machinery fresh water line, passes through the cylinder block and is discharged from the pipe in the upper part of the cylinder head. While passing through the cylinder block, cooling water cools the first and second stage coolers as well as cylinders at the same time. Lubricating oil is sent to the bearing and piston pin parts by the lubricating oil pump connected to the air compressor shaft. To lubricate the cylinder inside, the lubricator feeds oil through the lubricating oil pump outlet into the piston's low pressure side from one place each on both sides of the cylinder. System oil splash lubrication is used for the high pressure side. It is recommended to replace the lubricator when the oil pump is inspected and the oil check valve is replaced every 8,000 hours of operation. Next, we will introduce features of Company S's air compressor. We will see its parts as we follow its disassembly process. Open the crankcase cover after draining the cooling water. You can see the crankshaft, crank pin bolt, and bearing part. Remove the crank pin bolts. Remove the bearing. Shown here are a set of crank pin bolts and the lower bearing metal. Remove the valve cover and take out the low pressure valve. Here are a set of the low pressure valve parts. Detach the high pressure valve cover and take out the high pressure discharge and suction valves. The high pressure valve suction and discharge valves are not arranged in a straight line. Each is fitted using a cover of its own. You can remove the high pressure valves as needed. Detach the cylinder cover together with the air inlet and the upper part of the intercooler. Pull out the piston. Shown here are the piston and connecting rod. Overhaul the intercooler and aftercooler. Here are tube nests for the intercooler and aftercooler. The model from S Company has the following features. The low pressure valve can be overhauled without removing the cylinder cover. The intercooler and aftercooler are fitted on a one body block independent of the cylinder block. The lower part of each cooler makes a drain separator. Oil for the cylinder inside is supplied from an independent dedicated tank via a lubricator attached to the tip of the LO pump. The crankshaft rotates the pump worm shaft, which in turn delivers the oil to the plunger meshed with the worm shaft. The oil is then fed via the oil signal 
into the cylinder inside through an oiling hole. Air flows from the suction filter via the low pressure suction valve to the upper part of the cylinder, where it undergoes compression. It goes from the low pressure discharge valve to the intercooler with drainage removed in its lower part. After going through the high pressure suction valve, the air is drawn into the cylinder provided in the lower part of the low pressure piston for compression and via the high pressure discharge valve to the aftercooler. Drainage is removed in the drain separator in the lower part of the aftercooler. The air goes via a check valve to be finally fed into the air tank. Gauges display pressures and temperatures as the operation goes on. Cooling water is supplied either by the cooling water pump or the auxiliary machinery cooling water line to cool the intercooler in the first step. The water cools the compressed high temperature air and removes drainage. This process is working to reduce emulsification of the lubricating oil. After leaving the intercooler, the cooling water cools the aftercooler, then the cylinder block, before being discharged from the rear of the air compressor. Every day, it is necessary to confirm the amount of lubricating oil in the crankcase and the dedicated tank for cylinder lubrication. The cylinder lubricator has a hand pump for initial operation and removal of air from the lubricating pipe, enabling its external lever to change oil amounts. On the other hand, smaller air compressors have no cylinder lubricating equipment. Instead, they have a system designed to lubricate the upper part of the cylinder with oil mist from the crankcase. The following cases of trouble have been reported. Malfunction of or damage to low pressure valves. Malfunction of or damage to high pressure suction and discharge valves. Breakage of the piston ring. Damage to the piston. And damage to first stage cooler intercooler or second stage cooler after cooler. The following precautions must be taken when operating air compressors. Check oil amounts in the sump tank and cylinder lubricating tank and replenish oil as needed. Confirm cylinder lubricating oil flow. Beware of discoloration due to emulsification of crankcase lubricating oil. Confirm cooling water flow and leakage. Inspect and clean high and low pressure valves and listen to abnormal sounds inside the cylinder.